Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to QuickBox Labs on an impromptu episode today. On the hottest day of the year, we thought that, well, QuickBox has just announced the hottest product of the year. Question below. We'll talk about that if that's actually true or not. Um, and we thought that what better place to talk about it than here on QuickBooks Labs. And with me, I have Johan ready to talk and understand exactly what this product announcement is. Johan, do you want to tell the people of the world who you are, where to find you, and everything else? Good afternoon. A very warm, sweaty afternoon, even in Scotland. Would you believe it? We've got sunshine. Yeah, my name is Johan. I am the uh, managing group managing director of the On Point Accounting Group. We are QuickBooks Strategic Partners, and you can find me on YouTube and LinkedIn. Definitely. My name is Aaron Patrick, a chartered accountant, owner of a accounting firm called Boffix, a QuickBooks certified trainer with a fancy new logo, and that QuickBooks chap. I think it's time just to get straight into isn't it? The news it. of today. Now, there is actually two pieces of news. We'll just quickly go over the first news first, just so people know. Um, the first and less exciting news is the fact that you don't have to do your 90-day um, authentication for banks going forward. So they announced that today, which basically means it's less time you're having to sign in, go into QuickBooks Online and re-authenticate. There's no bad part about this, is there, Jan? Um, no. It's good news all around, isn't it? Definitely. Quicker, easier. And if that means I only have to chase my client once to log into their bank instead of once every three months, the client's happier, I'm happier, we're all happier. Now, there's one slight tidbit to that, though, isn't there? There's this, you have to go in and author, not authorise, but tick a little box to say you're happy to continue with the connection. But they haven't said if the accountant's allowed to do that on behalf of the client yet. So it'll be interesting to understand that. Otherwise, we're just back to square one and kind of we're still going to have to purchase them. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed, we get a bit of a common sense there and it gives us the opportunity to or fries on our client's behalf. So, yeah, we'll see how that yeah, goes. I can't see the banks having that. <laughs> well, there's always time. There's always hope, isn't there? We can always hope for it. All right. Okay. So, the big news, though, is a new product announcement. And we don't get a product announcement very often in the world of QuickBooks, but actually, they've extended their offering here in the UK from the standard three or four, if you count QuickBooks. Um, QuickBook self-employed, but we try not to talk about that and do we try and forget about that one and hope it dies a horrible death. Um, but there's free QuickBooks online offerings, which was uh, Simple Start Essentials and Plus. And now there's a new one. Do you want to give the name game away here, Jan? Do you want to say what the new one's called? Fresh in from America, QuickBooks Advance has landed. Has indeed landed. A QuickBooks Advance is here in the UK. Um, we thought oh, the best have come at once. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we've been talking about it a long time on this podcast. We've been talking about it, explaining to people that we're excited what it can bring and what it does in America and what we can get the most out of it. And where it landed today, we thought, well, let's go through and talk about it. So we do actually have a bit of um, items to show you. We're going to show you the product itself. But first of all, on the screen in front of us is a breakdown of what we can expect new. So first of all, they've given us opportunity to share access with multiple users up to 25 um, accounts and custom users. And from what I know, and this could, hasn't been confirmed yet, we still get that option as an accountant offer you client unlimited users as well. We do. 25 users. Sounds good to me, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is, I'm going to come back to this quite a few times today because this is what this is all about. QuickBooks have made a step into Sage's territory. Sage lost loads of territory in the small business world because QuickBooks and Zero came along and just ran all over them like it was incredible but sage has still had this real stronghold of medium businesses yep um and you could tell that in quickbooks online pricing like up to five users how many users does a small business really need 25 users well now you're talking about the big boys now you're talking about that one and a half million to nine million kind of bookkeeping accounting solution where those kind of businesses, they've probably got own business, multiple business owners and directors. They've got in-house bookkeeping, in-house accountant, in-house FD, all of those kind of roles that five just doesn't suit 25 exactly. will. Yeah. It's a real statement. 
and it's a statement and also timing couldn't be any better could it because um i don't know if you've seen but there's sage 200 i think it is is now is coming to the end of its life sage whatever whatever years old (laughs) <laughs> that's exactly it yeah um so you know those medium-sized ones that we're talking about that have you know sages absolutely held that territory they're not putting the support in that's needed they're trying to consolidate their offering which i assume is more than likely because the fact it's so confusing like what's sage line 50 or sage 200 like what's gonna you know, there's no, other than knowing sage inside now it's very difficult to be able to kind of distinguish between the two isn't it yeah. so they're definitely looking to consolidate that so this does give an opportunity for us to go right well instead of going to whatever sage's next billion pound offering is going to be um let's move over to quickbooks and see if quickbooks advance will be the solution and, and from what we can tell them we're gonna go through it now it seems like a no-brainer to be honest yeah I mean, so we're doing a lot of due diligence work as a, as a firm at the moment. So we've got five due diligence cases going on at the moment with all medium-sized businesses that are being acquired. Yeah. Every single one of them is on Sage. And it's slowing the process down so much because I have to go to the accountant and ask for reports. The accountant sends it to me. I then have to ask more questions about those reports because I refuse to install dirty software on my computer. Yeah. And I refuse to wait for them to post a blooming USB stick with it on to me. Um, and all of these firms that we're, all of these businesses that we're then going to become the accounting firms for, are struggling to justify online, QuickBooks Online to start with. But now I've got QuickBooks Advanced. So exactly. I can guarantee Sage you're about to lose about eight clients <laughs> in the next month to start with. Yeah, and that's a substantial amount of revenue if you go by what they normally uh, charge. Yeah. Um, and also, it should help even you know even the bigger firms because I know firsthand um, how you know the big boys operate in terms of them dealing with clients who are still on Sage and they're having to go through the whole idea of getting the reports and everything else. If we you know now there's an, an offering that could compete against that, again, it makes it makes so much sense to move over. Let's go for the next um, option that comes out there. Customized permissions by user role. And this is something that has been shouted out for a long, long time. It is one of those things where you can understand why people are nervous to move over because they can't quite get those users right. And I suppose when there was only five users and free users and everything else, it was a case of, well, let's give them access to either part or some or all. And that was probably the kind of going to be okay and um, but now we have the option to really fine-tune what they can and can't see and i think that is going to be the, the the real element where people are going to start taking notice of moving over to advance and it's going back to this discussion about sage and the size of business that this product is targeting to you know it isn't targeting someone that does all their own books and stuff it's targeting yeah. a firm where You've probably got a lady or gentleman sat there entering sales data. You don't want to have any access to anything else. You've probably got a uh, someone that's doing the day book and the credit control, but you don't want to access anything else. That level of detail is really important. Mm. Um, so, yeah, having those levels of access is going to be really important for us. I mean, we've got to look at it to go and see it now can't remember if we had this option in america or not but even having the option to determine what bank account they can and can't see that can be critical and even for practices so if you're running your own practice you know you may have a client account for example you're happy for everyone to see but you don't want them to see the main account where the wages are coming out of it's that sort of level of granule uh, granulity you want when you come to look at user roles um look at it from literally i'm looking at this product today thinking i need to move my my QuickBooks onto this because at the moment I'm sat there doing all of our bookkeeping and accounts, not because I don't trust anyone else to do it right, purely because that's sen- financially sensitive information. Do I want exactly. my team to have it? Yeah, probably not. So if I can do the restrictions and I get admin to go and do my sales invoice creation when I get a new client or something, happy days. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, I even um, did some work for a fellow uh, practice manager at practice, and we had to set them up a two-tiered or two-licensed QuickBooks license so that they can do their practice management in one license and then their accounts in the other, and then there was this whole thing every month then where they had to move the data between the two. It was an absolute nightmare. So, yeah, 
all these sort of options are going to be are going to be great. Um, the option to back up and restore QuickBooks data. I can hear them all now cheering. Um, <laughs> I, it's one of those where I, I, I get it, but I also don't get it. But yeah, for the people who need this sort of opportunity and need these options, it's, it's going to be a lifesaver for them, isn't it? And it's going to... Yeah. It's going to bridge the gap from what they're used to and what they com- what makes them feel comfortable. It's mindset, isn't it? Up. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to give them that confidence, isn't it? Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, I could back up Sage onto my CD-ROM on my floppy disk, and then I can come in in the morning, I could go into Sage, or the admin would go into Sage and break it. It's all right. I've got my floppy disk. And that has been a huge mindset and a challenge for us to promote cloud accounting over those solutions yeah because that's a huge safety net in their mindset that you're removing um so the fact that we've got backup and restore now that's just another barrier to entry gone definitely definitely um customize reporting fields now over in america this is actually a really clever little tool that we've got just to enhance that reporting and in fairness to the uk offering our reporting has always been strong no matter which version of quickbooks you're in um just some something as simple as the introduction of tags which went to all of them just kind of opened up a lot of options we can do with reporting side of things isn't it yeah. so you know we've always had really strong options there but this is going to be really really useful to um to a lot of people and and it was one of those things where when you look at america and they have the option of bringing in the third party like fathom and and items like that i was always wondering how uk was going to compete because we didn't quite need that that level that we already had a really strong um offering so i think just giving some extra reporting options is is just you know it's expected isn't it and it's probably going to tick the boxes that needs people to upgrade and again, it goes back, I keep harping on, but small businesses probably only need five or six, you know, four or five categories to report into. The bigger businesses where you want to see what your marketing reports are and all, you need the huge categories. Um, so yeah, QuickBooks has always been well equipped for categories, locations, and even tagging in the last two years. But 25 categories, that pretty much encompasses everything. And you, there's no lateral thinking of, oh, I've run out of categories, but I really want to look at this. Do I restructure my categories and locations to make this work? Do I use tags, but then I don't get the full reporting side of things? It, yeah, it r- removes all of those concepts of outgrowing it, basically. Definitely. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Ash, it's a pity he's not here today, Ash to redo his book on uh, tips and tricks for QuickBooks and see what he can come up with with the uh, uh, reporting field. Um, automate workflow. Now, this just is absolutely the bit that I was looking forward to. You mentioned there about upgrading your accounts to, um, to that was the first thing I did with, with Boffix, got those automated up, and now the world's our oyster in terms of trying to bring it in. And this will bridge the gap, from not only from Sage, but also from Zero as well, because some of their automations pretty stuck up. Uh, Bob on, where you got things like um, expense management and um, approvals for expenses and something as simple as sending out go cardless um, automatically when someone signs up as a new client. Those are the things where I've been spending a lot of hours outside of QuickBooks trying to find solutions to bring this in, to automate our onboarding, automate all those sort of aspects. And so excited for this one. I think this to me is where a lot of the cleverness will come into it and a lot of time is going to be saved and the justification for the price. And we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, For me, this could be an absolute game changer. Um, it's, It's limited at the moment. There's not much we can do with it. But it's one of those where I think there's going to be a lot come in in the future where we can we can we can add some extra bits on and and yeah we can really start to push push ourselves going forward. Yeah, I mean as a first attempt, it's got some brilliant stuff on there that when I'm thinking of the larger companies we're doing due diligence on at the moment, and I'm sat there thinking they've got a part-time admin person there purely to send out statements every month, purely to chase credit, pure, like it's all automated. So actually what you're spending a month on this is a drop in the ocean compared to a part-time person's wage. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, when you look at America's offering and what they can do with it, it's it's 
going to open up some really good opportunities for us, I think, to, mm. to, to, to sell QuickBooks as well as a, as maybe a viable platform to people who were on zero and wanted to move over, but they had a few features that they couldn't live without. This should bridge that gap. And I think this will um, definitely open the door for a lot of people. Uh, greater insights. Can't quite remember um, what, the um what the uh, options were there can you remember what the greater insights were was that the extra reporting my understanding is the greater insights is basically data deer which quickbooks brought yes yeah, yeah, yeah closed down so it didn't talk to zero and it's other competitors and they've just baked it straight into quickbooks online advanced um so data deer was a fantastic excel on steroids type thing um which so yeah that's just going to be huge yeah no you're you're right yeah that, that's exactly what that was and yeah that's gonna bring in some great aspects it's one of those where hopefully some of those will come down into the other versions of quickbooks as well i i imagine that they'll one day will start um bringing them down there but yeah it's going to be absolutely brilliant and then finally the opportunity to stay organized and yeah why, why wouldn't you want to stay organized on that one so yeah i i think just those alone gives me excitement um there are bits there missing though so if we look at the american offering we haven't quite got the opportunity to do um advanced apps yet but fingers crossed that's coming later um yeah. not been confirmed but that would be great if that does come later um and the batch add in as well that doesn't seem to be there yet but i'm you know pretty confident that that's that's coming as well is there anything yeah. else you remember or, or no i think this is what's important is this is the first attempt remember so this is the the soft launch no one at quickbooks is talking about this we are literally us two are probably the biggest promoters of this product today because we're doing a live session on it quickbooks themselves are not promoting this it's on their websites it's not hidden it's publicly available for anyone to go and use however they're trying to do this soft launch so they can iron out any bugs get some really good valuable feedback on it and stuff um so this is not the complete product. This is just stage one. And Definitely. I think, yeah, for stage one, it's smashing it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I just remembered what was under that stay, stay organized, though, that was actually quite potent, and that was the expense claims option. And we'll, yes. uh, we'll, we'll bring that. that one on as we come forward. Yeah, I, straight away off the bat, really happy. We haven't said price yet. Do you want to tell the good people what the price point is, and then we can have a chat about it? So going direct to QuickBooks, it is going to be £70 a month plus VAT, which I think it puts it in and amongst the lower end of the Sage product offering. I'm not a pricing expert when it comes to Sage. I never really spend any of my time wasting looking at Sage product pricing uh, because I've got absolutely no intention of doing anything with their products. Um, so I'd have to verify that fact i need to go and get fact checked by the bbc um on what i've just claimed but my understanding is that is competitive for the products that it's going up against um and there will be a discount for the accounting pro advisors in the same regards there are for the plus of the essential and the simple starts as well yeah yeah no it does make sense doesn't it um <laughs> We, we were having this discussion be, behind the uh, before we went live about the price point, and I think you're right. I mean, compared to Sage, it's absolutely bonkers. It's this price point, and compared as well to America, it's bonkers that it's mm -hmm. this low as well. Um, just so people don't, 120 dollars. I'm right in saying that. I don't. It, it was yeah. there or thereabouts, isn't it? 120 dollars. So even with the exchange rate, I mean that we get a substantial pounds. deal, aren't we? There, you yeah. know, on a monthly basis. Um, so I, I think just, just seeing at that price point, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with it. I'm happy with it. I think it will be a hard sell if we're trying to sell it as a competitor, as like for like for zero, as we kind of mentioned, maybe that's going to be tricky. Maybe that's going to be a difficult one to, to sell. But like you said, compared to trying to sell someone who's on Sage and looking to elsewhere, it's, it'll be an easy sell. Um, it does make it wonder in my mind as you know what price point plus is going to be soon because i feel like there's a bit of a jump now between plus and advance mm -hmm. um and i suppose there is in the us isn't there 
there is yeah there is but it always seems like it's almost like a, a whole different product it doesn't seem like it's that jump jump up so i wonder if there's kind of going to be a bit of a price hike for plus to bring it in line possibly that's my kind of reading the tea leaves sort of idea um but i do i i'm i'm impressed i i was expecting my my gut feeling was 100 plus so i was expecting that that's what i was expecting so yep. to see it as such a you know a competitive price point i think is is brilliant for it and you know the amount of features we're getting there the amount of enhancement and remember as well that the point of this as well isn't just these features we're talking about but what they do promise as well is that it's supposed to be a more you know robust platform to have multiple people working at the same time you're supposed to have that sort of element to it as well so i i can see that being being really really competitive and in america they've um they've had some really good positive feedback on how it works with the app you know the the desktop app that you can get mm-hmm. um so i wonder if you know if we're going to get the same sort of joy there just just to really make it so as you've said in those scenarios where you've got multiple people working on the same roof or whatever it's going to be that i can see that being really powerful going forward for them yeah wonderful shall we have a play around with the platform then and have Open a it look up. and what is there so as um Jan said it's all went live today so it gives us that opportunity to kind of play around with it have a look at it um and what we're going to bring up now is a completely bare bones client there's no data in there whatsoever um and it just gives us an opportunity to have a look and see what is there so let's go straight from the left hand side and just kind of pick out the bits that are new then so straight away we've got a new one here tasks so that's, yeah that's that's gonna be the um the new task feature we didn't mention that actually in the features did we but no, that we is didn't. yeah that's directly from quickbooks um usa Um, And it is something we'll definitely look at at the moment. Um, Banking, exactly the same. Sales, exactly the same. Then we do have under expenses, expense claim. We have a brand new one called workflows. And that's really where I'm excited and excited to go to. Um, Great spot here by Johan. Though budgets is is here. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) Can't get my head around why. But yeah, it's the same budgets that we've always had. Um, Just on the left-hand panel now. Um, reports are exactly the same, taxes are the same, mileage is the same, account is the same, and my account is the same. So shall we jump into tasks to begin yeah. with? So from the task center here, it sees that we have these opportunity to bring in some tasks. And this is where having those extra people, those 25 plus people that we can have in the in the prat or in, in the um, client gives you the opportunity to really go in here and start using this task situation to have that collaborative element to it talk between and give out some opportunities and tasks there so when we add a task you can see in the right hand side it looks very similar to the task pane we have in quickbooks advance uh, sorry quickbooks accountants area um gives us an opportunity to put a name of the task so new task we can say who we're assigning it to just here what the due date is make it a recurring task if we want to, add some notes, upload documents, select documents, and save. Initial thoughts? I think this is where we start moving away from emails, etc. So how many times do you email a team member in a bigger organization? Can you look at something within the financial function of the business? How many times do you slack them, teams chat them, etc.? Let's get it all in one place. Let's make it nice and easy, um, systemized, it's central. We've got a list of active, we've got a list of completed, we know what's happening. Definitely, definitely. Um, and this is where that workflow thing can be clever as well, isn't it? Because this is where you've already mentioned about automated and everything else. This is where we can automate elements to it. Um, again, one of the big, big elements where I struggle to bring people over from zero to QuickBooks is expenses being authorized. Well, here is your authorization of that particular thing. It's not, maybe not as quite as inbuilt and, and, you know, seamless as the zero solution, but it's serving the same problem or the same solution, isn't it? Yep. You got an expense and he's authorized. Well, create a task for it, get that authorized. And then that can be paid as 
or whatever the reason for that authorization is going to be. And I think when we start thinking about tasks and bringing those tasks in, I think we're going to find a lot of opportunities here to start, start automating things. And as an accountant, this here is also music to my ears, you know, have that opportunity to go in there and ask the bank to be reconciled every month and assign it to one of the team members in, in you know, whoever's responsible for it. Yeah. Upload the document of how they're going to reconcile it for you. And, and, you know, you've got all that functionality there as well, where it means that inside a client, we can have some really good opportunities to go in there and uh, and play around with it, don't we? Definitely. It's a, it's a very new concept for any of us QuickBooks users in the UK. So it's going to take a bit of creativity and imagination as to make us really work out how we're going to best utilize this and implement it, yep. um, which I think that just leads to, ex leads to excitement for the next six months of how are you using this? What are you doing for this? You know, and, oh, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? I'll need to start doing that. So, yeah, it's definitely a fantastic option for us. And I think your point there about, you know, and I think this is what every practice owner in the, in, in the UK should do is get it involved in your practice. Like that's where you're going to start really seeing those, those opportunities, isn't it? And, the, and the, those creative juices are going to start going. So you'll be coming up with it and, and adding tasks here for chasing a, a debt or chasing a client or follow up on a client, whatever it's going to be, start using it for what it's intended for, that sort of opportunity. Exactly. And, and, and the more and I always you're, say, if you're selling a new product, you've got to live and breathe it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even if we weren't QuickBooks only. Okay, if we were using zero free agent and everything else on the market, we'd have to choose one product for our own practice. And that product would probably make us more expertise, experts in that product than any other. And we live and breathe it on a daily basis. So we would be able to promote it better to our clients and explain the solutions it solves. So to be able to promote this product, all accountants should be upgrading and using it. Definitely. Agreed. Agreed. Now, I'm, I, I think, you know, I think this opportunity here for us to really start to take QuickBooks to that next level and start to really understand it as we go forward. Um, some filtering options here that people play around with and, and that'll keep that clean and tidy. Uh, the next bit was expense claims. Um, it says, here's your new home for employees' expenses, which, well, there wasn't a home for it before. So I suppose unless you had payroll, I'd pay, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what the new home is. But uh, yeah, here is your option to do expense claiming. And again, this is one of those features where free agent and was it free agent? I think free agent had it. Uh, but some of the uh, some of the others had this all built in as well. So yeah. it just gives us an option to to build that in and, and let it go. What I do like as well, I did notice, is it's also in the receipt management area as well. Yeah. So it's using that same technology, giving it from there. We've not seen or we've not been able to play around with the app yet, the mobile app, but that's definitely something on the cards to look at and see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, option at the top, new expense, upload receipt, enter expense info manually. Um and we get to put this, I need to be reimbursed, uh, the date. So let's put some numbers in here, what the supplier is, um, what the customer project is, and what the business power is. cable did you for £100? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> um, and that brings that expense claim not into view. So, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit buggy at the moment. But, yeah, the opportunity or the idea there is brilliant, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we've got plenty of expense claim products out there Yeah, that re require giving out cards, etc. If you don't need that scale of a solution and actually your staff do very little, but they do a few personal, few expenses each month, then this is ideal for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, personally, I, I love the expense management solution in the paywall product and um, for mm -hmm. advanced paywall that is yep. um i mean for for me it's been a lifesaver my staff go off they put it all in for me i just review it and it gets paid it's like you know couldn't ask for anything more um but yeah we'll see stop spending money yeah exactly right yeah um but yeah we'll see what these options can be for maybe there's solutions here for us to 
use this not only for expense claims but other, other options as well and we'll, we'll have a play around and see what it can be then we got for me the really exciting one my workflows so this is the opportunity for you to kind of build those workflows up again we don't have that many options here as it is now but i've seen what's available in america i've seen what you know what or I, I know of what is available or can be done just have a look at zapier for an example as uh, solutions that can be obtained by doing a good workflow solution um so i'm really excited how this works at the top here we've got my workflows the workflows you already got set up and some templates for you so this is where you've got that option of set up bill approval so there you go zero there is our our option of making sure that uh, bill approvals are done payment due reminder bank deposit reminder open estimate reminders you know we've got some nice options here for us to kind of build them in if we were going to go to the bill approval we're going to create and then we get this handy little workflow solution here where we can go through say what's it going to be used for who's going to be doing the task and what happens when it's actually been completed and done so yeah I, i'm i'm excited to what we can do here and, and what we can set this up for um yeah. it definitely needs an opportunity for us to sit down and have a play with but yeah, this could yeah. open up a lot of doors for us. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how much, how customizable is a custom workflow and how today and in the future, what does that actually look like? Um, but yeah, things like sending estimate reminders, um, I saw one, yeah, like you've got one to say that you've sent your payment so you can notify a supplier about your payments and stuff. Like, yeah, nice little things just to help communicate things like which once you get to that bigger stage of business, you really need. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. And and hopefully this is a start. Like I said, you know, when I first started it, the idea of go cardless and having that opportunity in there. Let's let's add them maybe Cresco as well. We know we're a big fan of it. Yeah. Let's see if they can uh jump on the custom workflow bandwagon um i don't believe the api and all that lot's open yet but let's hope it does soon um because we know how clever the app community is like you give them the apis for this we're going to see some some bonkers workflows aren't we that we yeah. can uh, we can all jump on yeah definitely um what else did we say we were going to look at on this one? Uh, oh, let's have a look at the adding a user before we go into the settings. Yeah. So um, under tour, your company manage users, and from here, we're going to go and add a brand new user. So this straight away, should people should see that there's some extra options here. We've got at the very top here, custom roles. Um, we can kind of go through and learn more about these custom roles just by clicking this little button there. But it does give us these custom roles though. So this is the big brand new element of it. Payroll manager, stock manager, expense, and sales manager. Um, standard user company admin, they're, they're normal. Um, reports only, time tracking, and give employee access to send expense claims over here. So that's going to help you have an opportunity. They also, expense claims won't count towards your user limit, which is good to see. Um, let's just see if there's anything extra in standard before we go into the extras. Nope, standard is exactly the same as before. But if we went in and did a custom role, let's say payroll manager, then we can see on the right-hand side what they can and can't see. Yeah. And for each one of those roles, we'll see it as well. Um, question, when we press next, do we still get the option? No, we don't get the option to make any adjustments there. But yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll, uh, um, that'll give us the option to do that. Add these suggested roles for the team, invoice only. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So that's how did I get? Oh, roles. There it is. That's there you go. Roles. Add a role. There we go. Live, live on this stream. That is what we look at. This now. This is this is what's impressive. So we've got the opportunity here to add a brand new role, and then this is what everyone's been crying out for: the opportunity to jump in. Only full access to permissions. For now, permissions are view only, create only, and others won't be possible. So it doesn't look like this is ready yet, but this will come through soon. And even the option to look at locations as well. Ooh, so you can bring it down. So yeah, if you've got a location, so yeah, so if you've got multiple stores in multiple locations, that could be really powerful. So um, so Edinburgh won't be able to see Sheila in Glasgow's. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly, exactly. Um, you got sales of invoice estimates, expenses, bills and checks, banking, bank deposits, stock, stock management, workers, reports, account management. So yeah, that as a starting point, that is absolutely chef's kiss on that one. Music yep. to everyone's ears, I think, on that one. And stock manager. Now that reminds me, I think we've missed something. I think we've overshot something here. Ooh. My understanding is product and uh, services is meant to be improved with better stock control. Now, whether that's there yet or not is a different matter. Let's find out live. <laughs> There's nothing so, there at the moment. I'm trying to think in the US what they've got different there. Uh, mm. Maybe some investigation will be needed on that one. But yeah, at the moment, it seems to be the same. Could be wrong, though. Let's see if I can... Uh... Oh, no, that's exactly the same. No. Uh, but what we could do, though... Right, we looked at users. Let's just go into accounts yep. and settings and see if there's anything in there that jumps out of us. Company, exactly the same. No expect, no changes there. Sales-wise, um, have they brought in the custom field options? The change extra yeah, ones. Have a look. Add custom fields. It's there. Oh, now this. Now this is. List. Yes, we've got this. So, custom fields gives us the option to go in and determine what those custom fields are going to be. So we now get to choose what type of custom fields it's going to be. So imagine you wanted to put in a registration number, for example. You could say that it was a text, text number, a number, date, or drop-down list, and you can even choose what those drop-down elements are going to be. That was the game changer that I saw a while back that I think is absolutely going to be uh, brilliant for this one. We can select what category it is. Is it a, custom, a tra customer transaction or supplier? Um, so you have the option to have custom fields now on transactions and on suppliers as well. And you also have the option to say if it's on a sales receipt, invoice, estimate, credit note, refund, purchase order, expense, bill, check, supplier, credit, and credit card. That is, um, yeah, I mean, that's... That's something that I have known a lot of people ask for, um, a lot of questions. Now, this could be one of those tiny little um, options there where it could be the turning point between someone going from plus to advanced, in my opinion. Definitely. Yeah, if you're going to be able to report down to those details. That, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly pretty right. incredible. I mean, the option of there of just having a drop down list is just going to save so much time and problem and, and make sure the data is put. And then now you've got the workflows. It could be if this drop down list is selected, then do this. And if that drop down list is selected, mm -hmm. do that. You know, it, it opens up a world of possibilities, even for us accountants, for our practice. You know, we could have what type of client is it? Is it a QuickBooks only client? Is it a zero client? Whatever it's going to be. And then it could do yeah. new things further down the line. Um, and give us that that option so yeah i am super super excited about that one what else have we got under the sales section um everything else is the same there product and services seems to be the same for now but yeah let's hope that there's some enhancements can you remember what those enhancements were does that bring any bells or i think was it not there they brought trade gecko didn't they yes turned it off from the world and baked it into America's QuickBooks Advance, is my understanding, or they're baking it in. Um, well, no, T Trade Gecko is now QuickBooks Commerce, right? Okay. So QuickBooks Commerce is still available and still active. Right. I've got a couple of clients using it. Yeah, so my understanding is it's going to have much better stock control integration, stock, that is, uh, yeah. stock taking ability, stuff like that. Is my understanding. Oh, now that yeah, now that is definitely something that needs to uh, come in. So yeah, let's hope on that one. That would be yeah, that would be a a great um, element. To see. Uh, they are all the same. Reminders are still there, even though. Oh no, they've dropped um, the standard reminders on this one because you can use workflows to do your own. Yeah, so that yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Although I, I imagine some people just prefer just to use that one, but that's fine. That's not a problem. Um, statements, no change there. Expenses wise, no changes in that one. Custom fields, yes, um, and time, everything the same, and advance. 
Nothing jumping out there. That was all about the same. Yeah, exactly the same. Wonderful. So I think with that, unless there's anything new in the list. Some form styles. Could it be? Is it is Could it, it possible? Be the solution you're looking for? It's probably not. Is it possible? No. <laughs> Standard. That's uh, that's a worry. Oh well. <laughs> Although that could be the, the the saving grace of that though is that we know that custom form styles is in is a an area that needs developing, let's put it that way. Yes. And the fact that it's not just appeared in advance gives us hope that that means it's going to be something that we hopefully will see in all versions of QuickBooks. Yep. And not just on there. Um and everything else looks exactly the same. Payment methods. That's all the same, shouldn't it? That's always the same. Yeah. yeah. Just, just wondering in overview, any new apps that they're wanting to connect? No, nope, they're all the same. So, okay, good start. Good start. Definitely. Can't complain at what's there. Um, let's just make sure. Share access multiple users. We've covered customize permission by role. We've covered backup and restore QuickBooks data. Is not available at the moment, is it? Oh, no, back at my company. Yep. Okay, so they can do it straight away. Although it's taken, taken me to... Okay. All right, okay. So it's all up and running. I was, I, I was under impression that wasn't going to be available. But, yeah, it's available, yeah. Yep. We'll have a play around with it, see what happens. We can back up, we can restore, copy, local backup. Everything you need there, really, isn't it? Yep. Looking Definitely. Good I mean, if that was the only thing holding you back from going cloud versus um, desktop, then yeah, fantastic. And the backup solutions I've, I've looked at in the past for cloud options, they're not cheap. No, no, for not the, at all. For the peace of mind it's giving you, I suppose I, I struggle to see the value in it because I didn't ever have, I've never dealt with desktop software. We always went, we went cloud from day one, but yeah, I, I struggle to understand the value it offered in the form of, 50, 60, 80 quid a month for the privilege of backing up your software to reinstall. I, I couldn't see it myself, but yeah. there we go. Built in, free Built of charge. In. Yeah, in exactly. I mean, it doesn't for, for what you need it for and what it will be used for, I think that's it kind of should be part of the price, shouldn't it? I don't yeah. see what, no, like you said, really what, what, why you would want to pay extra. So, um, well, I can imagine there's some softwares that would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they also have a solution where you're only allowed to what is it five five invoices at the lower one or something <laughs> like that and, and that unlimited package doesn't include cis and only has five <laughs> oh <laughs> um interesting that the new uh chart of accounts isn't here yet which yep. again i probably something we'll see against all of them so it's we've not talked about it yet on the show we'll talk about it next week but there is a or next month there is a a new chart of account style that's appeared in america so yeah it's not here on advance which is yeah i can't imagine that's going to come down anytime sooner i imagine they've been spending their time putting this together um the other one was customizing reporting fields which we talked about automating workflow greater insights and stay organized so i think that's everything isn't it have we missed anything no, Accountants tools the same. Yeah, yeah that, exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, no changes to workflows. No uh, to work papers or anything like that. No, that was all the same when I looked. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the fact that it's built off QuickBooks Online, so it's a very familiar product straight away for our staff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what you can and can't say about what's coming down the pipeline for this for training, but I would quite like there to be a module for my team members to be able to be certified in QuickBooks Online Advanced so that we know we can handle and they understand the extra features here because QuickBooks certification is just so good at covering all of its core features that you come out of that certification process and the renewal process knowing everything that's available at the time of certification. So it would be great to see an advanced version of that coming through um, in the same way we did for MTD and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it'd be very nice. <laughs> That's all I can say on that matter. Um, but no, you're right. Um, they, 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 there is... Const- yeah, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, training is definitely going to be important. One way or another, they'll be training. Um, I suppose the only thing is that not all the features are live yet um, until September, was it? It was, wasn't it? They were saying that it's going to be a... Some of the, the marketing push. Hmm. My understanding is going to be everyone's going to start talking about this in September. Yeah. But now they want a gradual kind of build up, just iron out any bugs that might be on the way. I wonder then if us wondering if those features are coming, they just won't come. So I suppose if you think about those advanced app options that we have Mm -hmm. in America, they must be very much a an agreement with Amazon, an agreement with Square. Yeah, I wonder if geographically they've got limitations to the Especially agreement. With Square and Zettel, they're not quite friendly with one another, are they? So, or sum up. Yes. Well, yeah. I suppose sum up are their own beast now, aren't they? Now they've got yeah. good tail and everything else. So, yep. oh. Maybe we're not getting that one, which will be a massive shame because the, the Amazon integration is just brilliant. The idea you can then bring those transactions in, keep that nice. And, and maybe that's why we're seeing the price point we're seeing because we're not going to get every single feature out there straight away. Feature parity, yeah. Very, very good point. And in America as well, and I I think this is an advanced one, is, oh, that's where my expense went. Random. Okay. Um but the um, here we also have the option to have that Google Drive integration as well, um, mm-hmm. which I think would be a game changer for practices because I don't know about you, but managing clients, sending data in and then getting into QuickBooks isn't straightforward at the moment. Yep. Having an option like going to Google Drive and then be able to bring that data in would solve that. But I've, again, I think that's a geographical thing as well. So, all right, okay. So quite got all of the bits that we want, but I think definitely enough there to justify the the price point shown and i think yeah i think Definitely. we're on to a winner so any final thoughts from you on um no on I, I i'm very happy with it for our first first go live i'm very happy with it all i think the timing's very good um the fact that everyone is traveling to zero con today i don't know that i'd want to be on a train in this heat he says having traveled or try to travel back during the Beast from the East. I was going to say, yeah. 2018 QuickBooks <laughs> event. Quick we went the other extreme, didn't they? So. <laughs> uh, you either go and get heat stroke at ZeroCon, or you get Red Cross blankets at QuickBooks Connect. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's a really good product. I think it undercuts Sage pricing-wise. Yeah. And it meets pretty much all of their feature availability. And I think, yes, it's more expensive than zero, but I think it's got much better features, better, re- more realistic limitations for users and stuff for the medium businesses that zero just doesn't even attempt to play with. Yeah, exactly so. right. And my, my final thoughts is the fact that for, for the accountants like you and myself, and we know a lot of our communities are saying, you know, those accountants who are looking to add value and help clients and push clients, then this sort of solution is exactly what what we can we can help clients so much more with this. We can automate their solutions for them. We can make it so that they've got you know the dream onboarding solution or whatever we we can do for them, um, and it just gives us that extra bow to our our, our you know the arrows to our bow, doesn't it? It gives us those options where we can. We, we can flex our muscles a little bit and, and show why, you know, why we're the price points we are or whatever the justifications we're doing and why you should spend that little bit more on QuickBooks compared to the competitors because you're going to get all of these extra features. The conversation we've been having in-house about this today is actually this opens us up to a whole new market. Exactly. So we're QuickBooks only. We had no intention of touching or learning NetSuite, Oracle, Sage, or anything, so that we can deal with bigger businesses. But we can deal with businesses bigger if we have the right tools. Our limitation, limiting factor has been 
do we did we feel the complex the t- on QuickBooks or Zero or Free Agent dealt with the complexities of the bigger business? We weren't confident. If we aren't confident, then we won't pitch it. Now we've got a tool which <laughs> opens up a whole new market to us. Exactly, exactly, and and it it's one of those, isn't it, where you know, yes, we're we're kind of talking about going into those bigger clients and everything else, but we're going to have that option of not only be able to come in and, and finally have an option for them and actually have an option where we can solve some of their biggest issues, like mm-hmm. consolidation, for example. Like even now with QuickBooks plus simple start and essentials, we could do consolidation better than you could on Sage Line 50 and all the others because we've got wonderful pieces of software that connect the two up and we can bring them all into yeah. Google um, Sheets or Excel and we can have them all singing and dancing and connected to one another. So suddenly it opens up, not only, like you said, to that chance to go into bigger clients and everything else, but actually not only be able to have those conversations, but actually do an offering that's going to be better for them going forward. And I think that, you know, is so exciting for for, for practices and an opportunity for, for yeah. clients. And like you've already kind of alluded to, zero con today, they're going to obviously announce things and everything else, but what they're going to announce that's going to be bigger than this, like, what can they announce? You know what I mean? It's yeah. It, 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 it's almost futile for them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And there's a, as much as, yes, it's great that this is opening us up to new medium-sized businesses, which is a new market, it is new revenues for us. So thank you, QuickBooks, for giving us that opportunity to get into that industry. There's also the way you and I work is that, we learn from one client and we share that experience with another. Exactly. How much are we going to be able to learn from these medium-sized businesses that we can dilute down to be effective advice and insights for small businesses who aren't really their competitors, the whole different ball game. But, and also how much can we, have we learned over the last few years about small businesses, about pivoting, effective ways of working, running on a bootstrap, like, that we can teach to medium businesses. Exactly that right. Everyone we service now and into the future will benefit from this release of this tool. Definitely, definitely. It changes the mindset, doesn't it? It changes the opportunity and, and, and it gives, you know, that whole suite now, isn't there? I know we joke about it, but there is still self-employed there for the smallest, smallest yep. client. And then you've got advanced, and you've got something for every type of client all the way up to, you know, your medium-sized businesses and what other product market product on the market at the moment can do that, you know? Yeah. And as you said, it, it, there is a big benefit for being in, you know, involved in just one, pra- one software solution. Um, and if you're in any of the other solution camps at the moment, you're going to have to f- consider other, other software out there to be able to deal with all clients. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I suppose unless you're Sage, but yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you're quite kind of stuck in the old probably days. Not watching this, they're probably yeah. using a great chisel. What's YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> so, you yeah. what? <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, um, and thank you for the question. So we've not been able to answer questions today. We did want to just concentrate on pushing through and giving everyone a bit of a insight into it. So we'll we'll keep those questions for next uh, one. So do make sure you're with us. Uh, I think we've got a date all lined up, haven't we, for the next one? Was it the of August. That sounds time. right, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, that's right. 13th of August. No, 10th of August. 10th of August. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, different time of five o'clock. So, Steve uh-huh. and Stephen, both of you, if you can uh, come back on then. We'll, we'll keep the, the questions anyway, but we'll promise we'll answer them on that day. Um, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Johan, if you any way people can get in contact with you, anything you've got coming up on your YouTube channel or anything like that you want to promote? Uh, I've got no videos at the moment in planning for YouTube, but I am speaking on a webinar with Reza Huda about offshoring your accounting practice oh, yeah. and making that work. So that should be a, there's a couple of us talking about our experiences and what we've learned. So it should be a really good opportunity for our fellow accountants and bookkeepers to get an insight into that. And then, yeah, stay posted. I might have a post about some socks on LinkedIn at some point. <laughs> and I'm sure you've now got video ideas regarding QuickBooks Advance. Completely. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Brilliant. Um, and for myself, it's um, did a video today all about zero. So I finally did that video that's been oh, through it. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally uh, gone down that route and talked about what zero has from a QuickBox perspective. Um, and now, and it's already out of date. So, <laughs> you know, um, and just like Johanna as well, I've got a webinar next Wednesday, accountancy managers, um, summer thing i'll be on there talking about digital um the digital apps that we use for our practice so yeah well worth listening they did one last wednesday and it was a really good um good webinar so yeah looking forward to that series and i think they've got five or six in the series uh with some people like rachel who's been on here and people like that so definitely well worth listening in on that one yep with your practice management of choice i'm sure you can they maybe not agree, but yeah. <laughs> uh, accountancy Manager is a brilliant product. Yeah. There's just, no denying that. It's just, just yeah. not the products I use. That's fine as well. <laughs> that is fine. Well, they say innovation brings, uh, or comp competitiveness brings innovation. So that's what we're going Something for. Something like that. Yeah, let's go for that. Brilliant. All right. Thank you very much for everyone who has come to this impromptu uh, video. We'll get the podcast up live as normal. Remember, if you are listening to the podcast, then why not come and join us live and get opportunities to ask questions like Steve and Stephen did. Again, I'll just not get those questions on today, but we will get them in the next um, podcast. So with that, then, it's just a goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And we will see you in, what is it? three weeks time now yeah. so oh yeah enjoy zero con if you're out there but uh yeah i'm sure i'm sure hey, the weather is perfect for you <laughs> goodbye <laughs>